are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our Expanded Presents Mobile Service Solution for Dynamics Nav, the Foundation of Growth webinar. My name is Michael and Trevor Tolo, and I am the Accounts and Marketing Manager here at Solution Systems. Uh, if you take a quick look down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see our Twitter handle, which is at solution underscore system. Uh, if you'd like to tweet, we'd love to hear any comments or questions you may have about the webinar through Twitter. Uh, so today we're very fortunate to have Mark Olison. I hope I'm saying that right, Mark, <laughs> uh, with us, and he will be conducting this overview. So let me go ahead and pass this on over to Mark, and he can get started. Yeah, hello. My name is uh, Mark Olison. Uh, I'm the sales manager in Expanded for North America, and my last name is pronounced Olison, if we say it in uh, Danish. <laughs> Uh, I have been working with Expanded uh, the last five years uh, and uh, we are of course partner with uh, Solution Systems and uh, we are doing uh, mobile uh, solutions uh, as an add-on for, for Microsoft Dynamics. Let me see if I'm presenting the right screen here. I think I am now and we're good to go. So just to inform you a little bit about who is Expanded. Expanded is founded in 1998 and we are still privately owned. The owner is sitting in Denmark. We have our headquarters in Denmark where we develop all our standard software. And then we have offices in Germany, Spain, Canada and US where we actually are uh, the, the resellers of the product and of course do all the customizations uh, for the solutions together with the partners or with the clients. We are around 55 employees worldwide. We have more than 25,000 daily mobile users on our system every day. We have more than 1,300 B2B shops installations. We have also uh, 4,000 NAV utilities installations. We are implementation partners worldwide, or we have implementation partners worldwide. And all our products are ISV certified for Microsoft Dynamics, and we are a Microsoft Gold partner. Just to tell you a little bit how Expanded integrates with our solutions. What you see on the left side, on premise, we have an ERP system. So this is actually here where you normally have your databases installed. Then we have a tool we call Expanded Connector where we map out fields to this basic application server. That's what the BAS stands for. With this BAS server, we can pull out the data. In this case, what we're going to see today is the mobile service solution. And here we have what we call a planning board or a dispatching board for the people sitting in the office. With, with this planning board, you have an overview of the different departments with the different field workers. What are they doing? When are they available? And how can we schedule the next job? When the job is scheduled, the mobile guy or the field worker will receive it on his laptop, tablet, or phone. And he can now start entering in the data we need to get back. As soon as he has finished the job, we send the data back to the database. I can, in this case, I have it here, so we can actually host this, the server, so it's in the cloud. We can use Windows Azure. I would say 80% of the time, we actually also install this basic application server on premise, so it doesn't have to be hosted anywhere if you don't want to. The things we're going to see today. So I mentioned the planning board. The planning board is for, uh, of course, again, the, the guys sitting in the office where they can create plans, see works locations, they can modify the jobs, we can create logins for companies and customers, and we can, of course, dis dispatch all the work. Then we have uh, the mobile client, the field work. He will, of course, be able to see the jobs that are scheduled for him. He can modify the data we want him. He gets an overview of the time he has registered on all the service orders or jobs. We, of course, can also create some reports. A lot of time we see people have reports on papers today where they have to fill out a lot of stuff. We can make them electronically, make them fill out the information we want, and then we can upload the report actually to what we call a service portal. That's the next thing. So the service portal is for the end customer. In this case, we have, I say, employees and end customers. So if we start with the employees, it can be where you can see all the jobs for site facilities with live status for uh, via the service portal. 
So if I'm a janitor in a building and there's a warranty here, I can actually go in and say I'm a janitor of this uh, facility, I want to create a service request for unit uh, 520 and I can go in and add, uh, add, add the information uh, we need uh, as, as the, 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 the company for, for servicing this and as soon as the service job is done, the janitor will be able to see all the statuses also during the job. The same if we're talking in customers. So if we have like a, a car lift company or a crane, we see a lot of time. Uh, if I'm a, I'm a customer and I have a crane, I want to have a services. We have to maintain them every third month. I can go in and do this service request uh, because now this uh, crane have done a certain amount of uh, lift and now we need to have it maintained. And then I go in and create the service request. And when the service guy is there, he can see the pictures and everything I have attached. Uh, and he can also upload the report as soon as it's maintained. And if something happens with the crane one day, we can actually show that it's, it's, we have serviced this and we have uh, reports and, and everything for, for this specific uh, uh, crane. The flow in mobile service management. We create the service orders in Microsoft Dynamics. As soon as the service orders is created, they get out to the planner. They can now schedule the job. When the job is scheduled, we're going to register the things we need. When it's finished, we're going to send it back to, uh, to Microsoft Dynamics and the order is built. And at the end, the customer can see statuses and reports on the web portal. You don't always have to create the service orders in Microsoft Dynamics. We can also create the order directly on the planning board. Next step from here is actually to see the planning board. So what I will do now, I'll go in here, open up all my stuff. So this is how the planning board looks for the guys, for the guys in the office. As you can see, we have it's Wednesday. And this is the time. And the red line down here is the time now. This is my department. I'm working in Canada and US. And this is all the field worker we have in this department. So if I clear the filter, you can see all departments I have in total. But because I'm the planner here in Canada and North America, I can create my own view. So I only take care of Canada and US. The gray boxes is the jobs that scheduled for the technician. And we can drag and drop them around. So I want to move this job up here. You can do that. I can move it back again. I can, of course, tell you, okay, this is actually the time we think it's going to take, but we can move it a little further. When the jobs are scheduled from the database, we see them in here. So you can see these are the service jobs, but we can, of course, also do service orders. And we just drag and drop them out to the field worker we need. Now it's telling me a lot of stuff over here because we don't know the exact address. You can also create, as mentioned, the service order on the specific technicians on the planning boards. So this is just create new job. And we can now go in, pick the customer. I'm going to pick one here in Canada. I'm just going to search for the country. So it's going to be this company in this case. Uh, I can change the, the shipment address or the, where it's actually. So if we have more uh, more uh, addresses on this company, we can tell him where he's, he's supposed to go. In this case, I'm just going to change it manually. So let's say you want to go to Dunder Street. Six hundred. I can tell them it's in Toronto, Canada. This is the contact. This is good. We, if we have some projects or service jobs, we can go in and choose it. And again, also we can pick the the service item line from the customer. I'm going to show that later. So, in here, it's a general service. My reference. It gets mark in this case, task description, it's broken. 
can tell him it's urgent. We can tell him that he has to call the customer before visit. I can tell him it's mandatory to fill out this report. We can send internal messages. I can send messages to invoice. We can actually also send portal messages, but that's also something we're going to get back to. We can attach a file. So if I open up here, let's go to pictures. I can just drag and drop in the files I need for this specific service order or service job. As soon as we are done, we can just say create. And we can now start over and create new jobs. So let's try to pick someone where we actually can see some service orders. I know we have the Canon group. So now we can either search for service jobs we know, projects from the databases, or the service item lines. So in this case, we want to fix this specific monitor. Again, what kind of service is it? It's because it's a monitor, it's a hardware service, your reference is Mark, top description is broken. And I'm not going to use Mark for this case actually. So we can just delete him from here and we can pull in that, I know Michael Fabata is my department too, and we can add it to him. And update. And now we have created a service order for Michael Fabata. And he's good to go. When we go back to the planning board, we can now see we are updating. So we actually getting this was the specific service order we created for Michael. I showed you the filter, so that was actually your specific views. We also have a search function, so we can go in and search for planning required. We can go in and search for all or new, all these kind of things. As you can see, I have a map here to my left, and the map is actually showing me all my field workers. And if I click on it here, you can actually see that's me jumping in the background, and now it tells me available jobs nearby or users nearby. So I can assign the job directly to the field worker from the map. So if we try to scroll out a little bit, you can actually see the flags are the jobs, and we have some field workers also here in New Hampshire, or I think it's in Boston. And when you click on the service order that's scheduled for the specific technician, so now we're going to click on this one, it would actually calculate here, so it root optimize. So this is the address I'm sitting at in the office, and there's two jobs scheduled for me. So it tells me I have to go up to Dupont Street first, and afterwards, or sorry, I have to go to the number one first. It's here on uh, King Street, number 600, and then I go up to uh, the Palm Street afterwards, and then I can go home. So we can route optimize too, and make sure he take the fastest uh, route. Another thing too is this, we call it the planning assist. It's an add-on, it's a module, it's not mandatory to have but this will actually calculate on the right persons for the specific job. So before we click on the, if we're gonna click here on the demo Toronto, we can actually see all the available field workers nearby, the traveling time, if the service level agreement is okay, we can also filter out on skills. So if he needs to have a specific uh, license for specific machines, this would be something we'll be able to show. And let's try to use uh, Danny in this case. You can now see that's where Danny is, and he can go there pretty fast. Uh, you can say it takes eight minutes. If we go up here, and click on this part too, we can actually say, see here that there's two options, so you can either go down on the highway or straight ahead, because then normally there's a lot of traffic here in downtown, so it's faster to go on the highway. And then we can assign the job to Danny. I'm gonna close down this and open up more here. We also have a message function, so if I go in 
and say message, I can send out internal messages to all my field workers. So, uh, or specific field workers too. But in this case, we can send it out to all, and I can tell everybody, Mark has birthday, so he will buy you cake in the canteen. We can also do it on a specific service order. So if I right click here and say message, we schedule actually, or we set up a standard text that we want to inform the customer, the job is now scheduled, we're going to visit you March the 2nd, 2016 at 12.25. And all the data you get here, we can either email or text message them, you know, sending an SMS. And I just mark which one I want to send and press send. We also have what we call move overdue. So if something is overdue, we can just click on the specific person and move overdue all the job on him or service orders on him. Then we have what we call recurrence. So if we have to repeat a service order or a job, we can go in here and say, okay, I have something called Mark's demo. We're gonna use that in this case. And now we can actually go in here and say what kind of work order is it? What service order? Let's see if I have anything. Just gonna pick this one. Duration, traveling time, we can save it. Now you can see scheduled jobs. And if I say schedule, you can see all the scheduled jobs that are recurrent here, and we can create a new one. And we can set it up, so it was too fast here. Let me just go back, schedule jobs. We can actually say if it's this week, next week, in the two weeks, next month, current months, or we need to custom this uh, current job. And you can see this is the service or the recurrence job we need to go out to. Another thing, if we right click on a service order, we can of course edit the service order always. I can create a copy of the job or I can add a coworker. In this case, I want to try to add a coworker. So me and Mike are going to work together on this specific service order. Instead of a coworker, in a lot of cases, this could also be a machine. So I need to book a machine for this specific service order because we're going to need it for the job. So let's say Mike is a bulldozer, I'm the service order. We update. You can now see these two jobs are attached to each other. So if we move them, we will also move it for the machine. We can also lock it, lock the job on time. We can lock it to a user or we can show the job, of course, uh, on the map again. So if we want to know where exactly is this job. I think that was enough about the planning board so far. Of course, uh, you can see we have green, gray, and stuff. That's actually the status on the specific service orders or jobs up here. So every time somebody's starting a job, it turns into green. If it's red, it's because it's urgent. Blue, it's because it's completed. And all the blue lines you see before and after the jobs, that's the traveling time we expect. I'm going to go to the mobile client now, so we are actually seeing how it looks for a field worker. This is the URL I'm going to log into. We run online and offline. When we're talking online, I need a Google Chrome or a Safari browser. Then he can just go to his link and he log in. When we're talking offline clients, this only works on Windows devices. This means uh, laptop or a tablet where we have Windows environments installed, so Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 10, whatever, then we can install the client locally and we can cache the data. So every time he's online, we're synchronizing, synchronizing the data back. When I'm logged in as the field worker, you can now see I have my own dashboard here. And uh, I'm a really, really bad field worker. I have a lot of old jobs. 
but if uh, we go into the 2nd of March, that is today, we can see the jobs that's scheduled for me here. So let's pick one. We can now see the work address, if there was a specific service that's been we worked on, the work description, and I can now start traveling, then it will lock my traveling time, or I can start work. In this case, we're just going to press start work. We, of course, also have direction. It's just going to open up Google Maps, so he has a navigation too. When I say start work, I can send messages back, or I can say it's fixed. We can send messages to invoices. We can go in and uh, fill out some fault reasons. So this is damaged by owner. It's a general fault area. The symptom is making noise. Uh, clock noise. It needs a software upgrade. We can save the data. I can, of course, also attach a file back. So if I'm sitting with my mobile phone or a tablet, I can go in, open up the camera. I don't have a camera here on my laptop. Enter in. And we can upload the picture here to the service order. If uh, we went and visit a supplier, so if I didn't have the items I need in my car, I can actually go in here and say, okay, I went uh, by Big Five Video, and invoice one, two, three, four, five is connected to this service order. So this will give you a comment back in the database that says invoice one, two, three, four, five is connected to the specific service order from Pratt and Whitney in Canada. Then we have the reports. So you can see uh, it's red marked. It's because we have to do something. This is uh, reports. We can everything we can customize. The expanded software is open source, so we can always add additional fields as long as we have the information in the database that we need to show. The same with the reports. They are dynamics, so we can change them as much as we want. So it looks exactly as they do today on the papers. But here I can just go in, enter in the information they need. They can see who is the contact. They can see the technician is Mark Olison. And we just press OK, and we can now see the checklist is done. When I'm done here, I go to my items. As standard, we works against product, resources, and expenses. Uh, and I can just go in. You can see this is the top 20 use product for me. So we're just going to add some items. Can also just enter in 60 of them and add it to the service order. Same thing with resources. So uh, I have this uh, power vibrator with me today. It can be, and we're going to add two hours on that. If we have some expenses, traveling expenses, whatever we know from the database, we can go in here and say there's a travel fee on this one, and I can add to quantity of that. When we have to add everything during the day for the service orders, I can go into my lines, and I now have an overview of everything that's added for this specific service order. If I'm working m more than one day here, we still need of course, to show him all the lines, and they will just be marked as gray instead. So every day he synchronizes the data back and makes sure we finalize what he has registered during the day and his hours, and he's not allowed to edit it anymore, but he will still be able to see what he has added for the specific service order. We can also create the lines directly, or the items uh, directly from the databases, so he just has to fill in the quantity here. Then we have something we called history. I don't have any histories on this specific service order, sorry. I didn't know this customer. I'm just going to pick one here, two seconds, that I know very well so we can see something. It's my fault. So history. We can now see all the service item lines or the service item we know on this customer. And if we press show all, it will now show me 
all the jobs we did for this specific customer. So you can see we have a lot of services on the computer and the monitor. And all the lines too, we added for each service order. You can of course also go into the specific service item and see the exact uh, jobs and lines that added for the specific service item. When we go to settings, I can show you the languages we can speak. Uh, not sure how to pronounce this one, but Danish, Dutch, English, Spanish, French, Iceland, Polish, uh, Dutch, Portuguese, Swedish, Chinese. So uh, there should be a chance of uh, you actually speak the language uh, we have in the in the settings. When he's done with, let's go back to the other order. Sorry. This one, sorry, not this one. So when we are done during the day, we say finish job. And again, it's whining about my report here. So it's because there was two reports, but I didn't want to show you the other one because that's in Danish. I'm just going to go faster with it. So the reports are now checkmarked and complete action. So I can now complete the job for me. I can send it to job pool so we can send the data back. Somebody else has to take over. I can send the data and continue tomorrow or we can send data and continue another day. I can make the customer sign so we can tell them to confirm that we spent uh, one hour on this specific job and we can also print or email them the order confirmation. Otherwise, we close the job, say finish job, and we go back to the dashboard, and we now start on the next service order. As you can see here in the, uh, the dashboard, I also have some functions. So I have what we call a job pool. So the job pool is the department I'm working in. So if we're going back to the planning board here actually, and we put up a job in the job pool, so this is the department. Everybody in this department will be able to see the service order or the job in the job pool. The same thing with location. I can open up my map and all the flags are the service orders that schedule for me. And you can see the green one is where I'm um, the, my location right now. I can, of course, create new service orders by myself. So if I'm out in the field and I know the customer, let's see, try and search here. So I'm going to pick the Canon group. I'm going to select it. It knows three addresses on the Canon group. I'm going to the first one here which service item is it. So instead of the monitor, we can pick a computer this time. The details, it's a hardware service, my talk description. Let's fix it. I think it's going to take me two hours. Your reference is Mark, ordered by customer, call before visit. The full reason, it's not sure we know, but we can enter in something here. Update, I can either start work on the job or I can send the job back to the planner and tell him to assign it to me tomorrow at 8 o'clock. And we create the service order from here. Another thing is my uh, week timesheet. So as you can see here, the day timesheet, I have registered one hour today and I've been working three hours and 12 minutes uh, for the week. And when I go in and open it up, you can see the specific service orders or jobs I'm working on, the quantity I've added, so how much time did we spend on each thing. And this can also be put up against the the salary, so that's actually what we, they what they registered is what we pay them for.
then we have what we call a file archive. It's like a mini SharePoint where we can upload specific brochures or documents they always need to have with them in the field. So this is for everybody. So if we upload something in the file archive, archive all the technicians in the field will, uh, will have that document. Stock checking. So uh, how this is built a standard is that we can actually do a stock checking on his car. So if he comes in every Friday, we can create the list. Let's create a new list in this case. And we can use a barcode scanner if we have, or we can just enter in the, the item number. And we can, uh, that was the wrong one. And we can enter in the description and say how much he has in quantity. So we always make sure we know what it is he has in stock and it, it fits with what he says and what he have used in the field so they don't take anything from the cars. This is how the mobile client looks. Uh, as mentioned, this can be modified. Uh, you don't have to have put all the features in. Uh, we do a lot of customizations here too. The last thing I'm going to show you is the service portal. So now I am going as an end customer and I want to create a service request. This is how the service portal looks. It's based on our e-commerce technology because we were like when we have people on a web portal, why not let them shop spare parts at the same time? But uh, that thing you can see in another demo where we have scheduled with the solution systems. So now I'm logged in as Andy Teal. I go to my service orders. So this is actually the service portal. I can now see all the jobs that's scheduled on me. I can see what type it is, the description, and the status from the planning board. If I want to go in and see completed jobs, I just press history information. And if I want to go in and find a specific report, I press on the reports. And we can now go in and find a report for the specific monitor we just did a service on. So now we can see here, this is the report. And if there was add some pictures, you can see here, there was the pictures we had. If we have added some comments, we will be able to see it here too. But what I would like to do is I will create a new service request. So I press add service. It now knows me again from Andy Teal from the Canon Group. So it shows me all my service item. Can I pick uh, running out of computers and monitor? Because we're going to pick a monitor again. We can see the serial number, the description the job information, so I prefer the start date. It's broken, again, and they have to fix it. Create, and we have now created a service request. So this is the service ID we have. If I take this server ID, copy it, we're gonna use it later, I can add, add a comment. This is a great demo. I can attach a file again. Oh. I just created the service orders instead because I pressed the wrong button. Sorry, my fault. We add the file here. We now uploaded the picture too. So we copied the service order ID. If we go back again to the planning board, we go into schedule new jobs. We say service orders created by user. And we search. So the job is now here, and I can now schedule it. So let's use uh, Karim in this case. The job is now planned for Karim. And if we go back, to the portal, we refresh the site. You can now see the job. The status is changed, is changed to appointed. As a planner, you can also go in, right click on the job, say edit. If I press the right one, say edit job instead. 
and I can now send some messages back. Thank you for the request. An update, or I can attach a file back, or I can add a specific service item for this case, because I know what, it's, uh, what, what item we need. And again, of course, we can see it here. So thank you for the request, or if we have uploaded the picture, he will be able. So he can always see what's going on with the service order, what have we done, what happened yesterday, what happens today, and the field worker can also go in, and so you saw we had the common field for the field worker. If he also go in and add a message, it will end up here at the web portal for the end customer. I think that was it from me for today. I just have a last PowerPoint slide here I'm going to show you guys. So what is next step with, if you want to deal with us uh, or you want a quote on this? Normally we do a demo and uh, from there we can create a quote. Uh, we always say that you have to buy a workshop from us. With a workshop we actually install the, the standard uh, system against your database and then we go through the solution totally step by step so we can build a workshop report that lets you know how many hours is this going to take you. The workshop report is a fit price for $5,000. Then we start the installations and the development, of course, out of the workshop report and then we can go live. When we in the development part, we use all the gaps we created from the workshop report. So we have what we call an online project system where we upload all the gaps, so gaps 1 to 20. And every time we have finished a gap, we will let you know, and you can now go in and test the function we have built or the customization we made. And of course, then we invoice you. Very nice, very nice, Mark. That was it for me for today. Uh, I know I'm a, still have some time left, but uh, I think no. I'll let you handle that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Hey, we uh, we definitely appreciate you taking the time out of your day to present this for uh, for our customers. Uh, you know, it's very informative. It's a wonderful product, and uh, I think uh, many organizations and people are going to be uh, really interested in it. So, uh, yeah. you know, thanks a lot. And if there's... And to, Sorry, go ahead. I was also, if you have any questions or anything, I think send them to Michael. Otherwise, tweet them in, of course. Right. Uh, exactly. but, uh, will, uh, and we will be more than happy to do a private sessions with you, too, and stuff like that. You are more than welcome to contact us, and we can, uh, we can schedule a meeting. Uh, I'm also able to show you how it works against the databases, so if you want to see how we actually create the service orders or the service jobs and how we can synchronize the data from the databases out to the mobile clients and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, it's a little more technical and sometimes it gets very boring, so that was why I didn't show it today. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, appreciate that. So like Mark said, you can contact me if you have any questions. My contact information is on the screen. Um, if, if I can't answer the question or if we can't answer any of your questions here at Solution Systems, we'll definitely get in touch with, with Mark and expand it and, uh, you know, obviously get you a an answer that you, uh, you like. So, once again, Mark, appreciate it. Thanks so much, and I look forward to the future. Thank you, too, and everybody have a great day. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye.